92 in Seattle's Grammar for Biblical Hebrew as we begin Lesson 9, which is all about pronouns. You know, pronouns, words like he, she, you, I, they, we, etc., etc. We're going to learn two forms of the pronoun in this lesson, actually, not just one. One is the independent personal pronoun, which would be like a word, oh, look on page 92 at the chart there, a word like who or he, um, which is a standalone word, which means he or it. Um, in the masculine. Third feminine singular, he. Who is he? He is she. Get it? A little rhyme there to help you remember those. Who, he, ata, you masculine, at, you feminine, ani, anohi, I, um, hem, hema, they, hena, they, atem, you, aten, atena, you feminine, anachnu, we. We've come to expect, of course, singulars and plurals, masculines and feminines, and yes, we get that all, um, all with the personal independent pronoun. How do those work? Well, look at the top of page 93. Here we're given five nice phrases, phrases like Ani Adonai, I Yahweh. Well, okay, smooth it out and put a verb in there. I am Yahweh, verbless clause. Navi Hu, prophet he, he is a prophet. Ataha ish, you the man, you are the man. Second Samuel twelve seven. Ataha ish, um, or ataisha, you the woman. Okay. Tzadikata, uh, you are righteous. You masculine singular is the referent there. Are righteous. Mecharan anachnu, from Haran we, from Haran are we. We are from Haran. Do you see how that works? Translating it in a sentence like that. Um, this independent personal pronoun, as Sia mentions below that, those sentences can come before or after the noun. Okay. Um, I would memorize that chart on page 92. Make flashcards for those babies, just memorize them. It can only help you, okay, as soon as possible. Um, there are a whole bunch of idiomatic ways that the independent personal pronoun can be used as well. This is on page 93, 2, 3, and then 4 and 5 on the next page. I want you to read those, practice them a little bit, but I don't want to go over them now. Okay? What I really want you to emphasize at this moment is memorizing the independent personal pronoun, and then the idioms that come from those pronouns, we will figure those out in due time. Okay? But please do read page 93 and 94, 2, 3, and 4. Indeed, read every word of the entire lesson, as I want you to do for every lesson that we cover. Okay? Don't, don't forget about that. It's important that you encounter this on your own, not just going through my, my recap. Okay. So that's one form of the pronoun. Here's another one, page 94. The pronouns, and this is like a magical thing, can be suffixed onto things like prepositions. Okay, we're going to find out later, actually, you can put them on nouns as well, and even verbs, yes. Um, but let's just stick with what we've got here, page 94. Page 94, 2A, if you can memorize that chart, just one of the columns. It's the same column two times. He just uses a different um, preposition to, to demonstrate it, whether be, in, or le, to, or for. I memorized this when I was a student first time um, with the le um, um, preposition. And, and in fact, what's funny about grammars is that sometimes grammars will list words in a different order. Um, um, so for example, Siaf starts with third masculine singular, second feminine singular, second masculine singular, second feminine first. So he goes from third to first. When I learned it, the grammar had it in first person all the way down. So I learned it and I, and I kind of like remembered it like a little like a little jingle in my mind. Li la ka la la la. And I remembered it like that, and I just have that in my mind now. Lila ka la 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 blah 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 blah. Um, you've got to find your own way to memorize this. If you want to memorize it down down the down the row there, la 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 ka la li whatever you want to do. Um, it's not so important. It's important that you know which ones are which. It's important that you know which ones the second feminine singular and which ones the first common plural and all that kind of stuff. Um, but usually people memorize them in the order that their grammar presents them, and if you want to do it that way or a different way, that's totally fine. So, page 94, 2a, here's how these work. So let's take the preposition le, meaning to or for, and then you attach a pronoun. So, lo means to or for him. La means to her. 
And in fact, when a word um, has a hey with a dagesh in it on the end like that, there is a slight difference in pronunciation um, from what you'd have if that word were just spelled lamed, comets, hey, with no dagesh in the hey. With no dagesh in the hey, it's just la. With the dagesh in the hey, it's la with a little aspiration, with a little breath coming out at the ah. Uh. So it might not sound different, but it's slightly different. Um, um, and if done subtly, well, it would actually sound different. La, 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 as opposed to la, 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 as opposed to la, okay? Lecha, to you, masculine, uh, uh, singular. Lach, to you, feminine, singular. Li, to me. Lahem, lahen, to them, to them, masculine and feminine. Lachem, lachen, to you, to you, masculine, plural, feminine, plural, and lanu, to us. Now you might notice, in fact, if you flip back and forth, toggling back and forth between the chart on page 92 and 94, that some of these um, pronouns actually bear an affinity to one another. So, for example, li, to me, that e ending is the same e on the end of anochi, or ani. Um, that nu on the end of anachnu, we, is also the same nu on the end of lanu, to us. By memorizing these two charts, they're going to, you know, reinforce each other in some ways. Of course, they're not all completely similar. I mean, who, he or it, is not the same as the o on the end of lo, for to him or to it. Um, but 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 some of these um, some of these will be will be helpful. Uh, um, second masculine singular laka that ka element on the end is similar to the ata ata for second masculine singular, whereas the second fe uh, feminine singular suffix pronoun lach has that kind of hard ending just like at has. Okay. Um, notice heim is the third masculine plural independent pronoun or hema. And then notice the third masculine plural with the suffix on the preposition, la hem. So it's the hem, hem, you know, a he and a mem. So there are some correspondences, and that could help you memorize these, okay? So it's not as though you're just starting over when you memorize the suffix pronouns. And then, as usual, on page 95, see, I've got some notes and some details, and these things will come up, and we'll, we'll go over them, um, and, and we'll see them again later in the book, but he just gives them to you now. Um, some other prepositions that can take a pronoun. You can just start tacking these pronouns onto all kinds of things. It's kind of fun. Page 95, the chart. The prepositions im, which means with, or eth, which means with, and bain, which means between, they can also take the suffix pronouns. So take third masculine singular, ito, can mean with him. Ita, with her. Ita, it, uh, itaka. Itcha, that, that tav in the middle is doubled, so the shiva is vocal. Itcha, with you. Itach, with you. Iti, with me, and so on and so forth. Um, you, so those endings are exactly the same as the li, lacha, lach, lo, la, lo, la, lacha, lach, li, however you want to say it, on page 94. But you can tack them onto different words. Okay, so now this is getting a little tricky. Um, page 96, oh yeah, now we have a whole other set of pronouns too. Um, this is the type, this is type B, okay? So page 94 was actually type A, but you actually get a whole different set, which is not entirely different, but does have a couple of differences, mostly in the third masculine singular and the third feminine singular. So if you use the preposition ke, here just as an example, or min, from, you can, you can see how this works. Kamohu, kamohu. So who there, just like the independent per personal pronoun who, here can just be tacked on the end of a word. Kamohu, like him. Mimenu, from him. Okay, what happened with that N and the H there? What's going on with that? What do you mean mimenu? Why shouldn't it, shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be mimenhu? Ah, but what do you get there? Assimilation of the N. Remember, nuns will often assimilate before, before another consonant. So instead of min, mimenhu, you get mimenu. Um, and instead of assimilating to the H, you get two N's there. Mimenu, that's how that works. Um, kamoha, kamoha, like her. Mimena, from her. Kamoha, like you. 
mimecha, from you, kamok, like you, second feminine singular, kamok, mimech, from you, kamoni, like me, okay, now it's not just an e, but a ni on the end, kind of like ani, uh, the independent personal pronoun, mimeni, or mini, even, from me, kahem, kahen, kakem, kaken, kamonu, those, those are pretty expected. Mehen, mehen, mehena, mechem, mechen, memenu. Okay. Uh, then, page 97, we can even tack these pronouns onto other words, which will even appear differently. Now we have a type C for the pronoun. Um, again, a lot of similarities, but a couple of things that could throw you for a loop. A flying, flying loop. Like the third masculine singular. Okay, and we're using the preposition L, which means to or all, which means upon. A love, a love, to him or a love, upon him or it. Um, students often have trouble pronouncing that, that weird cluster of things at the end of a word, like a love, but that's how it's pronounced. I'm just using a good modern Hebrew sort of pronunciation there, doing our love like a V. A love, a love, and a love, upon him, it. Eleha, to her, Aleha, upon her, Elecha, to you, Alecha, upon you. So that Cha, Ka, and then the, the um, Eli, and Alai, to me, upon me. Okay. Um, still, you know, yes, it's I instead of E, but it's similar. You still have a Yod marking the first common singular. Okay. And then the, the third masculine plural and so on are, are expected. Except you get a little yod intervening in there, okay, with al and with al. Um, alehem to them, alehen to them, alechem to you. Um, Sia doesn't give you fake forms if they're not attested in the Bible. So the second feminine plural, um, um, which would be alechen, is actually not attested, and so he doesn't even list it. Okay, so we don't. We're not going to do. Um, um, hypothetical or fake terms that actually don't appear in the Bible. CO doesn't even give them to us. Um, that's partly why I followed uh, uh, um, when, I, when, I, when I teach Hebrew, um, I follow this, this method of not dealing with hypothetical stuff that's not in the Bible, um, because this grammar I'm using here, CO's grammar, he doesn't do it either. Okay, We're not learning to compose in Hebrew, though composition skills could help you read tremendously. Um, they can help you memorize things much better than just only going from Hebrew to English, but you know we're not going to we're not going to worry about unattested forms like that, even though it's this one's simple enough. Um, so about on page ninety-seven, that's that's a good chart right there. There's a chart for you. Combines type A, B, and C of the pronominal suffixes. Okay. O, who, and of for third masculine singular. Ah, ha, and aha for the third feminine singular. Echa. Really, you could just think of the second masculine singular as ha, 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 with some vowel differences before that. Second feminine singular, ch, 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 okay? And first common singular, e, ni, and i. But you get the yod each time, okay? Then on page 98, he goes down the, uh, the plurals for those. Okay, that's complicated enough. How about, he's going to dump on you another concept here. This concept seems difficult, but it's actually not. Um, it seems like, oh, another thing now? No, don't worry. This one's not bad. Number three, page 98, the marker of the definite direct object. Um, it's the word eth. Eth. Um, eth is not translated when it's used as a definite uh, direct object marker. Rather, it marks the grammatical direct object in a sentence. Okay? So, let's look at some examples. Page 98, three. Sholeach et Moshe. Sholeach et Moshe, sending whom? Moses. Moses there is the direct object. Uh, the subject would be whoever is doing the sending. The direct object is the thing being sent. Sholeach et Moshe, sending Moses. Sholeach et Ha'evid. Ha Sholeach et Ha'evid, sending the servant. Sholeach et Avdi, sending my servant. You see that little E ending there on Evid? That's how you put a suffix on a noun. Kind of nifty, right? The indefinite direct object, however, is not so marked. So if it doesn't have a ha before, um, or it's not um, um, the definite object, it's not marked. Sholeach Evid. Um, 
sending a servant. Okay. So you don't get the f the 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 the, the direct object marker if if the noun is not also definite. Um, with ha. Um, by the way, the definite direct object marker also looks identical to eighth or f with. You just have to determine from context what is going on. Um, and then he gives some examples, read those, etc., etc. Um, now you get some more pronouns, some object pronouns on page 99. Um, you can also tack our, our pronoun endings, which we had on, on a preposition, like li, laka, lak, lo, la, and you can tack those onto the direct definite object marker, f, so that they mean otho, him, it, otha, her, it, othak, or I'm sorry, othka, second masculine singular, you, othak, you, second feminine singular, oti, oti, me, f, f, hen, or otam, them, f, hen, or othan, them, f, hem, you, second feminine plural, not attested, he doesn't give it to us, and othanu, us. So when the direct object of a verb is a pronoun, they can indicate um, um, the definite direct object this way with a pronomial suffix. Um, how is that used? How about page 99, 4b? Here we get two examples. Ani sholeach oto. Ani, I, sholeach, the call active participle from sholach, send. I am sending, who am I sending? Oto, him. Ani sholeach oto, I am sending him. Who sholeach oti? He, who is he, sholeach, call active participle, sholach, he is sending othi, me. Okay. You can also put these uh, pronouns on the end of the word hine, which means archaically behold, but is often not translated. So that you get um, all this stuff on page 100. This is not as important as um, as some of the other things, so I don't want you to go crazy about that. I do want you to read this portion on page 99 and 100 about the suffixes on hine. What's more important is to see page 100, B, uses of hine. There's no equivalent to hine in English. Traditionally, they've done it as lo or behold, but that's not really what it is. Um, it, it's, a, it's a marker of the immediacy of an event or situation. It sometimes introduces the circumstances of something that is happening, as C.L. puts it. We're going to find out that Hebrew doesn't really mark tense always very clearly, but it has to be inferred from the narrative action and sometimes from helping words like hine and other kinds of narrative cues, okay? There is a kind of school of thought that says, look, if, if ancient Israelites were saying hine, then we should say some word in English, but we don't really mark the immediacy of, of our speech in English the way maybe that some other people did. So that means that that theory of translation might not work. Um, it sounds a little too loose or idiomatic, but sometimes I almost wonder, in certain circumstances, if we might want to translate hine as look. You know, it depends on what kind of speech is being used. Because we do use words like this in English. Look, here's the thing I'm trying to tell you. You know, hine, it's, it's just a, it's a way of directing attention. Okay. So he's got some examples here. Hineni, Abraham says in Genesis 22.1. Literally, you know, here I am, something like that. Genesis 22.7. Hine ha'esh v'ha'etzim. Hine ha'esh v'ha'etzim. The fire and the wood. Hine, here are the fire and the wood. Hine ben kadesh uvein barad. Between Kadesh and Barad, it is. It is between Kadesh. You know, you wouldn't say, behold, it is between Kadesh and Barad. You just say, um, uh, it is between Kadesh and Barad. Vayomer Lavan, Hen, and Laban said, very well. So Hen is one form of, of, of Hine also. And Laban said, very well, uh, Lu, Lu Yehi Kidvaecha. Um, and Laban said, very well, let it be according to your word. See that your on the end of kedvarecha, davar, put the suffix on the end, your word. Um, Songs 116. Hinecha, yafe, dodi. Handsome, my love, dod means love, e, e on the end, my, dodi, my love. 
Um, but what do you do with the hinecha? Well, something like, you know, just, it, it focuses attention. You are, notice the suffix, ka, hinecha, you are handsome, my love. Hineni nothein lo et berichi shalom. Hineni, I am, that notice the first common singular suffix there. Um, I am giving, notein, participle, I am giving to him, et berithi, my covenant, my berith. Notice the suffix in the end of berith, of peace. Okay. So that's how, that's how some of this stuff works. Okay. Go back and review this as many times as you need to. I'll read the vocab once quickly. Eth, or eth, with, or together with. Saviv, around. Im, with. Zavach, sacrifice, related to nouns like Mizbeach or Mizbechoth in the plural. Zevach, sacrifice. Karat, Karath, Karath, cut. Shalach, stretch out, send, let go. Esh, fire. Gibor, hero or warrior. Gevua, strength or might. Dor, Dor, plural usually Doroth, generation. Zera, Zera, notice the emphasis on the first syllable there, that's a segalit. Zera, seed. Midbar, Midbar, desert. Nahar, plural Naharoth or Naharim, could go masculine or feminine. River, rivers. Its, plural Etzim, tree, wood. Paro, Paro, Pharaoh. Sade, plural Sadoth, field, country. Shem, Shem, Shemoth, name. Shana, year. And then a couple of proper names, page 102. Eliyah, Eliyah, Elijah, Daniel, 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 and Rivka, Rivka, Rebecca.